The Cyclone 4 FPGA card has a 4-digit, 7-segment display. Let's play with it. 7-segment displays have 7 connections for each of the segments in the display, and then separate connections for each digit. And these displays are multiplexed, so you can only turn on really one digit at a time. But there's tricks to make that work. Here's a schematic for 7-segment, 4-digit. LED. You can see that segments A through G are all connected together and there's a separate line for each of the, of the digits of the display. So to turn it on you have to put a positive voltage on A through G, whatever segment you want turned on, and put a negative voltage on pin 12 or on the cathode. In the case of the first one it's pin 12. If you're trying to trace through the schematic, the signal names change because the signals for the display go through resistors. And the sort of odd part here is that they've got both the segment resistors and resistors for the common per digit. And usually I thought that the one, the common per digit one, did not have resistors because that would create different brightnesses when you have different segments turned on. So this is a little bit unusual and, and perhaps um, wrong or perhaps unnecessary, but it seems to work and I guess that's okay. And these are the pins that the schematic shows for the digit enables and for each segment and, it, and there's also a line for uh, the decimal point here as well. It's worth noting that the seven segment display signal names are shared, at least four of them are, with the LEDs on the card and that's the DSDP, G, C, and D. So when you're working with the seven segment display, it lights LEDs on the card, and that's probably gonna be unavoidable, I think. Yep, it's lighting lights on the card. Here's a schematic representation of a single seven segment display. This particular one is common anode, and it shows what happens and how you would light each light. To turn on each segment, they're numbered A, through G, A being at the top, B in the upper right, and each of those segments when they're turned on or voltage is applied uh, will turn on that particular segment so that you can create all the letters or all the numbers 0 through 9 and the hex letters A through F and they're definitely usable and readable. That's part of why I wanted to do this. I want to have a hex display and having four digits is probably exactly what I really want. The reason you can go between the displays and turn on each one for a quarter of the time is something known as flicker fusion threshold. And it's basically the response of the eye and probably the brain as well to uh, flickering images. If they flicker at a low enough frequency, they're very flickery. But if it's at a higher frequency, you can't notice them. Uh, for instance, old television scan 60 hertz from top to bottom. Now there was phosphorus in an older television that would stay on and keep it lit up and same thing with fluorescent lights but LED lights um, not so much the exception being white LEDs and I've noticed in my shop light that's an LED light that when I shut it off it stays a little bit illuminated I think they've got some trick they're doing in there as well I've never really looked into it but this article indicates that white lights have a different effect well Uncle Google to the rescue I did a search and look for seven segment LEDs with four digits and found a VHDL project on the FPGA for student site and thought I could adapt it. Um, several hours later I'm done adapting it so it, it works and we'll take a look at it in a second. Here's an illustration of the two types of seven segment displays. One of them is common cathode and the other is common anode. One shares a common negative pin and the other shares the common positive pin. That code that I found was written for the other type of display from what we had, so I had to do some modifications to flip the senses of the bits. Rename the entity to elapsed time counter, and it's counting in hex, so it's a little strange for people to watch. They might walk up to you and say there's something wrong with your computer because it's counting 0 through F on all the digits, but it um, could be changed to be a BCD counter and count up 0 through 9. Just thought it was kind of cooler this way and definitely more computer geeky. But this is what I want anyway. The goal is to just have a place that I can put 32-bit uh, values out to, or excuse me, 16-bit values out to, uh, 
and this particular example exercises it by doing a one second count and every count incrementing the counter. Uh, kind of fun to watch too, something that the board is doing when it's just sitting there. I had to flip the segment bits over to make them correct. So for instance, zero turns on all of the digits except for the last one. Their code was the reverse because of the common capo, common anode difference between the card that they wrote their code for and this FPGA card. Um, not a big deal. Um, also while I was in there I changed all the frequencies to 50 megahertz instead of 100 megahertz. The port map is pretty simple. It gets the clock uh, not reset because they were active high reset and it gets the anode activate and LED out for the segments and LEDs select. I'm going to put all this code up in GitHub and put a link down in the show notes for where you can find it. There's only two sets of pins to add to the pin list. The anode activate and LED out, not too complicated. And of course you have to go to the pin planner and connect it up to the actual pins of the part. Uh, originally it was backwards, um, so I'm not quite sure why. I didn't really dig too hard. I just saw it was counting on the most significant digit first and then just flipped them around and it worked fine after that. So if you use this code, it should just work on the card. It seems to do the job. And here it's running on the card. I set up the far left switch so that when you press it, it resets the counter back to zero, resets the microprocessor. You can also see the LEDs blinking across the bottom in, in concert with the display segments. Uh, the other thing worth noting is that they do dim up and down. I've modified the VHDL code so that the code 16-bit value can be passed down into the module that displays it and displayed here what is probably one of the more common fill patterns for embedded programmers. Uh, maybe you recognize it. For this change, I've renamed the file as, or the module as, LoadVal 7 Segment Display. I also renamed the VHDL file to keep both of them in case you wanted to play with the other one. And that changes the entity name here as well. The only real change here was to comment out the signal on the displayed number and bring that in externally from the microprocessor module. So in that microprocessor module, I'm sending displayed number in and I'm putting in the binary value for the hex digits D E A D. Pretty simple. Next thing I'd like to play around with is tapping off various buses like maybe the UART receive and watch data come in from the UART or go out to the UART. If you want more information you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.